All right, good morning. I'm Aaron Heiser, Maker's Leather Supply. And um, today I'm gonna be doing some coloring on a, a project. Um, the build video is gonna be coming um, throughout the week, but uh, this is, uh, it's the Lux handbag. Um, it's a new pattern for us, came out in last month's mystery box. And I'm getting the video done now. Um, anyway, there's, I, I tooled one and I started to work on the coloring and stuff. And then I realized, well, I probably should record this just so people can see it if they want to. Um, so, that being said, we'll get to it, and I'll explain what I've done so far. Um, let me get a little bit of zoom here. So, um, there is quite the tooling pattern that comes with this pattern, uh, or with this the, the handbag design pattern. Um, Don Gonzalez provided this tooling pattern for us. This is one part. You can see it's already covered by tape, I apologize. Um, and there's the other part right there for the uh, little fold-over flap, okay? Um, anyway, so the first thing I did is I took our fine line masking tape. Um, this is amazing tape for masking leather because it's sticky enough to do its job, but it doesn't leave any kind of residue or anything on the leather, um, which is a really good thing. <laughs> so, uh, what I do is, one of the reasons I really love this stuff is, as you can see, you can see my tooling through the tape. So I put the tape on, and then I take my scalpel blade and I cut the outline of the, um, of the tooling pattern out. And that way I can pull the masking tape off of the, uh, the main body of the project, but yet all the tooling stuff remains masked. Okay, and I do this when I'm going to airbrush. I am going to airbrush this entire thing. I have not decided yet. I really want to do a navy blue, but what I haven't decided is do I want to do um, like a fade job where it's a darker color closer to the tool or a lighter color closer to the tooling and then it gets darker as it gets further away from the tooling or um, do I just want to do navy blue? Um, the accents on it are going to be tan. I think I decided this morning. Um, I was gonna do like navy blue and baby blue, but I just, I don't like the selection I have here of baby blue leather. So I um, I think tan. And honestly, that's way more in my wheelhouse. Um, I'm not that big on a lot of colors. If you follow my videos, you've probably seen that. Um, anyway, so all I'm doing, like I said, I can see my tooled pattern through the tape and I'm just taking my scalpel and cutting it out and that way when I'm done I can take this tape and lift it off and you see where like it follows the uh, the curvature of the tooling there um, I've already cut from here all the way um, around down here and then up to where you see me now uh, so yeah I'm going to continue cutting out this pattern uh, and when I'm done I'll peel off the uh, the excess tape and then we will get to doing some airbrushing here in a little bit when the uh, sun's high in the sky. I don't want to do it. I like to do it outdoors um, due to the vapor of it and everything but I don't want to do it while it's still kind of a lot of moisture outside from the morning dew and stuff. Um, you know this is Texas it's still 70 something degrees even though it's January so we have dew problems in the morning. Anyway, um, when I come back, we'll, I'll have all the, the cutting done and we'll carefully peel away the excess tape. All right, so I got everything cut out and um, I do not get in a hurry when I'm doing this because when I do get in a hurry, I just screw it up and then it takes me longer to fix it. So um, to, to take the tape off, I very carefully just start peeling it one little bit at a time and uh, sometimes I'll get to where maybe a cut didn't really match up very well and I may have to go back with my scalpel and you know redo a corner or something like that but I go really slow because I don't want to just yank the tape off and then the tape comes off of something it shouldn't have and and stuff like that too um, yeah so it goes really well and really easily as long as I did a good job cutting it. Um, I, I did say that I use a scalpel to do this. I just 
you know, I throw a fresh blade in that scalpel and it is just super duper sharp. And uh, I feel that it's the best tool for this. I've, I've, uh, exacto blades and stuff like that are, are a good second. Um, but I feel like those blades are a little bit heavy for just trying to cut through the tape and not cut my leather. Um, the good news is the tape, you know, is over a, a beveled line. So it's not, it's not like your blade has to really make contact with your leather, um, as long as you're careful. Okay. So this is going pretty well so far. But I am on camera, so I'm sure something will screw up soon. Such as this area right here. Didn't even get cut. <laughs> got to remember if it's covered up it won't get airbrushed if it's not covered up it will get airbrushed so you got to make sure that everything you want covered up is because once you got that airbrush out it is too late to go back at least that's how I feel about it I don't want to stop airbrushing to uh, redo taping and stuff like that comes together. All right, so there it is. Now, I do go back and kind of repress every bit of the edges of this tape down to make sure my airbrush isn't going to get up up underneath it when I'm when I'm spraying, okay? If there's an area where it's lifted up, you will get overspray underneath it, and um, we don't want that. We don't want it at all. There's a high likelihood that your antique will will cover it up, but we don't want to uh, leave things to chance. We want to make sure that we've done everything we can to do it as good as we can. Alrighty. So, all that being said, like I said, it's going to be a couple hours before uh, the sun's warm enough to, to get the moisture out of the air this morning, but then we're going to be airbrushing this, and by the time we've done that, I'll, decide, I'll have decided if I want to do like a lighter blue closer to this and then fade away into a darker blue, I, I don't know. Um, the more crazy things like that I do, the more risk I have of not liking it when it's done, whether it be that I did something wrong or um, just that, you know, I don't like how it looks. <coughs> but anyway, we'll find out when we go to airbrush. <laughs> all right, so we are outside now. As you can tell by all the noise, I'm sorry, we are right by the interstate. But uh, I am gonna try the turquoise leather dye and the navy blue. Um, turquoise is pretty much the lightest blue that I could find. Um, I don't feel like it's a a greenish turquoise the Phoebe's brand one so anyway I am going to try to airbrush it closest to the flowers and then the navy blue fade into the navy blue um, if it doesn't work out the good news is I can just cover it with navy blue and it'll be okay all right um, other than that I am using an experimental airbrush it's a new one we're looking at carrying it's kind of an upgraded model to our other cordless airbrush um, comes with lots of different options and stuff, but this is the first time I've played with it, so I honestly, I, I don't know how good it's going to be. We'll see. So, yeah. Um, hopefully it doesn't screw up my project if it's not a great airbrush. <laughs> um, so I'm going to start, when I'm, when I'm doing anything that's multicolored, that the, the colors are similar, like different shades of brown or whatever, I, uh, I always start out with the lighter color one in my airbrush, because then I can always just pour the darker one in on top of it and I won't have to clean out the airbrush in between coats. And as I do this, I realize I did not bring paper towels out here, so I'm going to have to be super duper careful. 
Um, anyway, so I'm going to start with the most important piece, which generally I would not, but again, I need to do the lighter color first. Um, covered my entire table with uh, paper towel or uh, cardboard so that I can do a little bit of this and kind of, you know, get the spray down on this thing. And uh, here we go. So when I'm airbrushing leather, especially if it's masked, I try to hit it from every angle, okay? Um, where there's a border, I'm not going to do the fade. I'm just going to do the navy. But I hit it from every angle because I can see it. I don't know if you can, but um, where the spray goes across the different levels of, of uh, tooling and whatever, it leaves spots that are not, that are not dyed. So try to hit it at every angle and that will get it up under those areas. And that's going to be about it for the turquoise. I'll make sure I get a good coating out here. But that's the shade I'm looking for right there. Kind of a lighter blue. This is the only area on this whole bag that I'll have this color. So I think it'll work out just fine. Um, so now what I'm going to do, I'll turn the camera off for a minute while I uh, dump this back into the turquoise bottle. Um, I'm going to grab me some paper towels and I'm going to fill it up with the navy blue. And we'll do every other piece in navy blue. Alright, we're back. Um, I uh, dumped the turquoise back into the turquoise bottle and I filled this thing up with uh, navy blue. Now I'm just going to run a little bit of it over here on the cardboard until the navy blue comes through. And uh, I'm going to get to brushing, okay? So I'm going to airbrush this, uh, the rest of this piece and every other piece. Um, I'm not going to record the entire process because it just, you know, there's no reason to watch. But um, anyway, but I will record the, uh, the two pieces that have been masked off. Um, I will record those. So here we go. As you can see, it's a much darker blue. I've got a very heavy spray going on here. I'm not going to do my fade just yet. I'm going to worry about solid areas first. Now, if you notice, when, I'm, when I go back and forth, I'm going completely off the leather and then coming back. Because if I change directions and my airbrush is still on the leather, I will have a darker spot there where there's a higher concentration of, of dye. So that's a hard lesson learned, but it's a lesson learned, thank God. So um, I'm going to come back and I'm going to try to get into here and do my, my fade area. We'll see how it works. Again, if I totally screw it up, I can just make the whole thing the darker blue and it'll be okay. not as worried about this area right here because there will actually be another piece sewn right here. So um, honestly as far as the fade goes that's probably as good as I can get. I did get a little bit too close down here but the good news is I'm also antiquing this and it's going to help a lot of this just blend in really well. So I'm just going to kind of hit up some areas here to make sure everything's got a nice even coat on it. may not look that impressive just yet, but it will once I get to uh, pulling the tape off and you see that the, the tooling is still perfectly natural colored. <coughs> On this piece, the only thing I'm doing is the border. Everything else has been masked. So I can hit it nice and heavy and get her done. All right, so I'm gonna talk, turn the camera off, but I've got, uh, four gusset pieces to do here. I've got four handle covers to do. Um, I've got the bottom and then I've got the other side which has no tooling on it so it'll just be the solid blue. So uh, when we come back we're going to do the antiquing and stuff like that. Alright so here we are back in the office. Um, 
much quieter in here. Um, so the very first thing I need to do after airbrushing or any type of dyeing something is I need to buff the, the leather off, okay? And what it is, um, how dye is made, it's a, it's a whatever its base is, whether it's water-based or, or, or alcohol-based dye, whatever. Um, they mix in a very fine powder that's the pigment that makes all the color of the dye, okay? Um, and what happens is when you, no matter how you apply it or what kind of dye it is, some of those little bitty pieces, particles of powder do not absorb into the leather and they're just sitting on top of it. So if we take a piece of sheep's wool or an old scrap of towel, something soft, and we just kind of buff it off a little bit, then what we're doing is getting rid of all of that so that when we put a top coat on or something like that, it won't smear dye color. Um, airbrushing is one of the best ways to apply dye in my opinion. Okay, my opinion, don't kill me in the comments. Um, because you don't have as much, like right there, I, there, there's barely a blue hue on this thing. Um, when if I'd have done that with a dauber or something like that, there would be tons of blue on here. Um, because it doesn't oversaturate the leather the way that daubers and things like that do. Um, right now my main focus is only going to be on the pieces that I need to antique. Okay, I'll do all the rest of those off camera, but I'm going to rub on these. And it didn't run necessarily, it's not as much on here, but you can see where it spread the dye on the, um, the tape. Okay, because that tape, it's, it's not able to absorb into the tape. All right, so now I'm just pushing dye particles around, but I do this before I take the tape off um, because after I take the tape off, if I start rubbing on it, I risk um, smearing some dye particles into what I've worked so hard to mask off, okay? So I'm just, again, a little bit of rub time. I wait a while to do this because that tape, again, dye doesn't, absorb into that tape so therefore it um it takes a while to dry on the tape all right and um when i when i'm pulling the tape off that if the dye is still wet then i risk you know getting it all over my hands getting it all over the the part that uh, again that i've worked so hard to mask off so i just I wait a while or i'm extremely careful one of the two all right now for the magic kind of hard since I pressed it down so well on all the edges it's kind of hard sometimes to get it started coming off but check that out still undyed and pretty okay and like right now it looks kind of plain but in a minute we're gonna antique it and it's gonna look amazing as long as I don't screw up now I have gone before and taken and cut out all the background area out of the tape and all that um, to dye into those areas as well. And it's one of those six in one hand, half a dozen the other. The other way is to take a little paintbrush and dye all those areas individually. Um, in my experience, it takes just as long to cut out all those tape areas as it does to use the brush and background dye all those areas. Um, so I really don't have a preference on which one that I would say that I like to do. Um, all that to say this, I'm not doing anything to the background areas here because I'm going to uh, rely on my antiquing to get into those areas. Okay. Now if you have an area, a piece of tape like this that there's not really a corner you can grab up on, you can always reach underneath it with a scalpel or um, scratch all, you know, something with kind of a fine blade. And booyah. Alright. So there's that piece, and then the other piece is this one right here. To get the tape off of. And this is a little bit more difficult on this piece because I've got that border, and I kind of push that tape down firmly inside that border, and uh, so it makes a little bit of a difficult situation when you go to pull it off. Okay, now, <coughs> this is where doing that um, buffing comes in, in real handy. The next thing I'm going to do is uh, apply some sort of a sealant 
so that when I go to antique it, the antique doesn't get into all the little cracks and crevices of, uh, or sorry, into like the pores and stuff of my leather. Um, this piece of leather that I tooled on is actually quite porous. Um, I probably should have chosen a better one or gone over it with my glass slicker before I started tooling it um, to, to close up some of the pores and stuff because that's going to be difficult once I start antiquing. Okay, now I have here. Um, this is something I used to use all the time and it's still a product I love. I just, we don't carry it in the store currently. We're in talks with this company to carry it. But this is RTC uh, Sheridan Resistant Finish. This is an amazing product for resisting, okay? And the reason I'm kind of breaking my own protocol and using it on this is I like it because it's not super shiny. Um, I don't like shiny on most projects. And the, um, the resist that uh, Phoebing makes, the Pro Resist, it's an amazing resist, but it is very shiny, okay, at least in my opinion, it's very shiny. Some people would say, no, no, that's not super shiny. It just has a gleam to it, whatever. It's too shiny for my likings, okay? I don't want this purse to be shiny. It's not gonna be matte finish. It's not gonna be dull, but I don't want it super shiny. So, um, again, we're gonna carry this stuff. We just aren't yet, but it is an amazing resist. I do love it. I used to use it all the time when I was doing custom work for a living. This was my go-to resist. I didn't start using Pro Resist for until probably two years ago. Um, and so, anyway, um, to apply it, I just, I've got an old scrap of t-shirt here, okay? I don't wanna use something like this to apply it because what's gonna happen is it's gonna leave all these little fuzzies in the finish and they're gonna be really hard to pull out and then when they, when it dries, they're just stuck to the finish, okay? We don't want that. Now, I am going to work hard to do the tooled areas first with this stuff, okay? I need to get more of it on my, I need to just let it soak in here. I shouldn't do this over the project because if it spills, I'm screwed. Um, whew, yeah, making a mess. So anyway, I, uh, and this scrap of t-shirt is almost waterproof. <laughs> this stuff's just not wanting to soak into it. But anyway, I'm gonna do the tooled area as much as I can first because I don't want to get it over the dye yet and get a bunch of dye, you know, anything that didn't get buffed out on my uh, wet um, t-shirt here, you know. So when I say wet, the shirt itself is not wet, it's just the product on it now. Okay, so there's kind of a light coat. I'm going to get a little bit more on here and do it again. But you'll see that once I start spreading this stuff everywhere, there's going to be a lot of blue that gets lifted off and it's going to be on my little rag here. And that's why I try to do the tooled areas first. I'm going to do the same on the, uh, I'm making a mess of this stuff over here. because it's just rolling off this t-shirt. <laughs> I should have uh, found me a more absorbent piece of cloth. Okay, I've got a much heavier, better coat here. So that's good. Um, this stuff is much, the consistency of this liquid is much thinner than the um, uh, resist that uh, Phoebing makes, the, uh, the Pro Resist. It's, um, I mean, this is almost the consistency of water, and that stuff is considerably thicker than that. Um, more milky, I guess you could say. Again, this stuff is super porous, uh, this leather is. Um, I really should have chosen a thinner piece, and that's why I want to make sure that I get this RTC onto that tooling as well as I can, because it's going to make a huge difference in cleaning the um, antique off. Alright, so I think I've got my tooling pretty good. Now I'm just going to go ahead and get it everywhere else. And then I'll show you how much blue came off on it, okay? That doesn't look like a lot of blue, but if I wipe that across my tooled surface, I'm, I'm not going to like the result, okay? Um, so generally, I will let this set for about 15 minutes. It'll be dry to the touch, 
and then I'm going to apply another coat, and then it'll, and then I'll let it set most of the day, because um, kind of like painting your car. Let's say your car looks and feels dry to the touch. You're not ready to drive it down a, a dirty road yet. Okay, it needs to cure a little bit. So um, I'm going to turn the camera off, but like I said, I'm going to let it set for about 15 minutes. Then I'm going to apply another coat. I'm not as concerned with the next coat. Um, you know, trying to keep the tooled area and the and the blue area separate. The next coat I'm just going to slather on because this stuff is now the dye is now sealed in. Okay. So the next coat I'll slather on, um, I'll wait um, probably four to six hours. Um, generally I would wait overnight, but I don't have that kind of time with this project. I really need to get this, uh, this series of videos done. Um, so yeah, when I turn the camera back on, we'll be ready to antique this project. All right, so it is time to antique these pieces. Okay, and again, the only ones I need to antique are the ones with the tooling on them, okay? And uh, how I do this is I do like to use a piece of sheep's wool if I have it. If I don't have it, then I'll use, um, you can use a paintbrush and really just jab that stuff in there. Um, you can use a scrap of uh, towel that has, you know, lots of uh, fiber to it or whatever, you know, like the, you know, almost like carpet. Um, how you could use carpet, I don't know. I, I hadn't tried it, but I'm sure you could. But anyway, um, when I use the sheep's wool, though, like when you cut this stuff off, like it's going to peel off like this. Okay, so to keep those little fibers from getting into my, my work, I'm going to give it a little bit of a haircut around the edges. Okay, and that helps. And then I'm going to take it to my trash can and just, you know, really give it a once over, flapping it around with my fingers to uh, clean it off. Okay, so. I'm going to do that right quick. My trash can is not on camera, so you won't see it, but you'll probably hear it down here. And I just want to get as much of those loose fibers off as I can, because I don't want to be picking them out of my project later. Okay? It's the only thing that really stinks about using the real sheet full stuff. It's, it's absolutely amazing as an applicator, but you got to clean it up first. Okay? Now, um, I am using the Phoebing Antique Paste. Um, um, generally, uh, I like to use dark brown. Um, Doc that works here, he likes to use black. But on this one, I'm using Sheridan Brown because it has kind of a tan tint to it. And again, some of the accent pieces on this are going to be tan. So I'm trying to do that to keep up the, the color motif there, all right? So this stuff is real simple to use. I know a lot of people struggle with it, but it's it's not hard to use at all. Um, the biggest thing is resisting. That's what most beginners that don't understand why their antique turned out terribly, they don't know to use a resist. So they slather this on there, it gets in all the little pores and everything, and it really just discolors their leather, can, and it has streaks and stuff all over it, and it just looks terrible. And it's, and it's just because they didn't know. And, um, you know, that's how we learn best. I uh, I personally, when I started leather work, there wasn't YouTube, there weren't Facebook groups, there wasn't anybody that would help even. Um, you know, if you went to a saddle shop or something, they would totally shut you down if they found out you were a leather worker because they didn't want to train their competition, you know, nobody was sharing information. <coughs> so I ruined a lot of pieces learning how to do stuff. All right, so simple to do. I've got me some paper towels sitting over here. It's my absolute favorite thing to wipe this stuff back off with and all I'm gonna do is slather some of this on here and then I'm just gonna wipe circles on my project and make sure it gets in all the cracks and crevices you don't want to rub hard okay you don't want to ruin the the uh, the um, resist that you put on there you're not trying to rub it in through the resist it needs to sit on top of the resist the other thing I'll tell you is if you're not lining your piece which I'm lining this you might want to put tape or something on the back of it because as I make a mess with this it's going to get on the back and if you wanted the back of it to stay clean guess what all right so just going to take it rub it in there good little circles and I'm very liberal with this um, I mean just slathering it in there because I would rather get a good job on here than try to conserve even a tablespoon of this stuff um, this stuff comes in either a 4 ounce or a 32 ounce jar, and honestly, it'll last you a long time. 
So you can even wipe, wipe off the excess and put it back in the jar if you want to. All right, so I got it on there. I don't leave it on there very long. I don't want it setting up on the, on the surface of the leather. I just want to wipe it back off. So I take my paper towel and I'm just wiping the surface. I'm not trying to wipe it out of all the cracks and crevices. That's where I want it to stay. That's why I'm using an antique. Okay, and I just wipe it until I feel like I've gotten enough of it back out. And there's what we're left with. Ain't it pretty? So there you go. I did the small piece, now I gotta do the big piece. Larger pieces can be more difficult because you need to work fast. Again, I don't let this stuff sit in here very long before I start wiping it back off. Um, I don't want it to have time to penetrate my, um, my leather. I just want it down in my tooling, okay? Now, if this were a natural piece of leather and it wasn't dyed, I would actually put this all over the leather because it will slightly color it, okay? But with this being dyed, it doesn't matter. You won't see the difference um, once I wipe it back off. If it were a natural piece, you could see the difference and it would matter. Check that out. Huge difference, isn't it? Okay, I'm going to throw that paper towel out and get a clean one. Just kind of do the same thing. And I think this Sheridan brown color is going to go really well with the, uh, the tan accents that I'm going to do on this bag. Uh, when I say accents, like the reverse gusset pieces uh, will be tan, um, the interior will be tan, stuff like that. So there it is. That's the uh, coloring of this whole project. Um, I'm not going to get over which or talk about which edges I'm going to burnish or anything yet because that'll be part of the actual build video. I wanted to get this coloring video out of the way because this purse does not have to be dyed and, or uh, tooled and colored. It could stay um, natural uh, or, you know, it could be made out of a colored leather for those that don't tool. Um, that's the awesome thing about this project. I feel like it's a really nice project no matter if you make it out of a colored bag leather or if you make it out of edge tan and tool it. So. Until next time, we'll uh, just keep on keeping on with this. Have a great day.